first of all, uh, did Sir Malcolm Rifkin, do you think, make the right decision today? Yes, I think he did, but I think it's very sad. He's had a very distinguished public career, as has Jack Straw, devoted for decades of his life to public service. And I think it's sad that a life of public service ends uh, because of uh, brouhaha. You think it's sad, but was it the right call? Oh, yes, it was right. He was absolutely right to do it. But I feel sad and sympathetic to him on a personal level that he is a good man who's worked very hard for his country, who made an error of judgment towards the latter part of his career. And I think that's something one should have human sympathy for. Lisa Nandy, uh, Sir Malcolm Rifkin, Jack Straw as well, both making the decision to stand down as MPs. What's your view? Should politicians uh, step down before they've been proved to have broken any rules? Well, I think in Jack Straw's case, he was already standing down at the next election. And I would echo part of what Jacob said, is that I think it's absolutely right that Jack, in particular, had referred himself to the independent watchdog for parliamentary standards, um, is having the case investigated, and um, is no longer part of the parliamentary Labour Party while that happens. I think that's absolutely right, because there has to be a thorough independent investigation. But there's a bigger question here, I think, about members of parliament having second jobs, paid directorships and consultancies. And tomorrow in the House of Commons we've got a vote to try to stop that from happening. I think in this day and age most people understand that we're human and that we make mistakes and are very sympathetic to that, but aren't sympathetic to the idea that when they send us to parliament to do a job in the public interest with our full time and attention, that there are a number of MPs of all parties who are taking money from private interests and that's something that we're determined to stamp out. OK, well, a, a quick response from Jacob Rees-Mogg on that issue. Do you want entirely professional politicians who know nothing other than politics, do nothing other than politics, or do you want people who bring business experience into the House of Commons and make a contribution from what they know in business? I think it's very important to have members of Parliament with outside interests, and there is certainly time to do it because ministers have a second job for which they get paid beyond being uh, parliamentarians. And unless you want to have the American system, where you have the ministers entirely separate from Parliament, you have to have a Parliament that allows for ministers okay. to do their second jobs. Well, well, I'm not going to get drawn into another debate about whether or not MPs should have other jobs for now. But at least, Andy, let's broaden it out a little bit further. Do you think the politicians should have higher standards than the rest of us? Um, I don't think that the public expects us to have higher standards. In fact, I think, it, quite sadly, the public at the moment expects that we have lower standards, but I think they'd like to see that because we have really responsible jobs. The decisions that we make affect millions of people. And I do think there's a big distinction between having outside experience, having, say, run a sixth form college for many years before you come into Parliament, and taking money from private, say, healthcare companies while you're a member of Parliament for a consultancy. It's really hard to see, as a member of the public, how you can have confidence in the decisions that we're making if we have those outside interests. And that's why it's really important that we are not just sticking to the rules as they are, but actually making sure that the rules are fit for purpose as well. And, and how much of a message does it send out to the public? If politicians need to play by the rules or, or, or the public, why should the public? Absolutely, and you shouldn't have paid lobbyists. It is quite wrong for members of parliament to take money to lobby. It is not wrong for them to be barristers or doctors, or in my case an investment manager, which has no conflict with what you're doing in the House of Commons and is not a question of using your influence in terms of your business. But influence peddling is definitely wrong. And, and finally, Lisa Nandy, do you think the public are actually more forgiving than we think on these issues? I think the public are very forgiving of the fact that we're human beings and we make mistakes. You know, there were a couple of cases recently. There was Maria Miller, the Culture Secretary, who resigned over expenses after a long, protracted, drawn-out public row. But there was also a case of another Conservative MP, one of her colleagues, Charlotte Leslie, who made a mistake on her expenses, came to the Houses of Parliament and said that she was sorry. I think the public really understands that we are just human beings and we make mistakes. What they don't understand is when they look at a handful of people in Parliament who um, think that it's OK to play by different rules than the rest of us. And that's why we're having this vote tomorrow, because we're determined to change it. OK, well, uh, no doubt this debate will rumble on there. Lisa Nandy and Jacob Rees-Mogg, thanks very much indeed. Thank you.